not less than one million citizens who are nationals of a significant number of member states. I can, I can immediately add at least seven. With, uh, may take the initiative of inviting the European Commission within the framework of its power to submit any appropriate proposal on matter where citizens consider that the legal act of the Union is required for the purpose of implementing the treaties. You see that in this sentence I have made in bold where citizens consider. That is an important point. Not where the EU Commission is thinking is important in this respect, because what they want to do, they can do every time. But in this European Citizen Initiative, the citizens are in the foreground, and they should say what they want. The procedure and condition required for such a citizen internet, uh, initiative shall be determined in accordance with the first paragraph of Article 24 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. That is written in the treaty. Now, in this uh, Article 24, they have then made the regulation number so and so from 16 September 2011. And then uh, this uh, European Citizen Initiative uh, was uh, going into force at 1st April 2012. And there is a very important article within this uh, regulations, which I uh, have uh, written down in some extent. That is Article 4, uh, uh, Paragraph 2. Within two months, the Commission shall register a proposed citizen initiative, provided that the following conditions are fulfilled. That is the criteria which they are looking for, uh, if they say yes or no, what the citizens want uh, to uh, Dealt with. The first uh, A is clear. The Citizens Committee has uh, been formed and the contact persons have been designated in accordance with Article so and so. Uh, this is uh, a very good uh, thing because uh, the EU Parliament has uh, achieved uh, that the first proposal said at first 300,000 signatures have to be collected before EU Commission think about if yes or no, has reduced to seven persons from seven countries. That is certainly much easier and to, uh, uh, to make such a uh, committee. Uh, but uh, we was of the opinion as much as possible is better and we have in our citizen committee 14 countries in Europe, which I refer to later. And then we had a problem because only seven can be filled in in the formula. So we have to decide which form. And so it takes us half an hour to decide because in reality it is not important. That is the official <laughs> citizen committee and we are speaking always from the working European citizen committee. That us is 44 peoples from 14 countries. The second point, B, is a critical one. The proposed citizen initiative does not manifestly fall outside the framework of the Commission's powers to submit a proposal for a legal act of the Union for the purpose of implementing the treaties. That is really a terrible paragraph because it can give the EU Commission completely freedom to say yes or no if you are interpret manifestly fall outside or not manifestly fall outside, that is completely open for interpretation. Yes? So I came just uh, one moment later to a proposal. C and D is okay. The purpose, the proposed citizen initiative is not manifestly abusive, frivolous, or vexatious, and the proposed citizen in initiative is not manifestly contrary uh, to the values of the Union, as set out in Article 2 of the treaties. That is certainly correct. Now, I came to this red paragraph. This red paragraph, uh, there we have this problematic sentence, purpose of implementing the treaties. That means you can only something say 
what is already in the treaties and make it a little clearer. But what we want to do is for the purpose of amending the treaties. If we think we have not a social <coughs> union, we have only one for, for anything else, but not for the social union, then we cannot make anything if it is said it falls outside the competence of the EU Commission. So in our opinion, either this little b has to be deleted or the paragraph should uh, include also for the purpose of amending the treaties. And that was uh, discussed on 5th of October in Vienna in a European conference, how to proceed uh, with this instrument, European Citizen Initiative. And exactly this point was get very much support, that in reality, we should have the possibility of amending the treaties. But the evaluation of the instrument of the European Citizen Initiative can only be done in 2015. That means in two and a half years from now. That means before we have to uh, live with what is given at the moment. Now I come to what is given to the moment. I refer to the European Citizen Initiative and the title of the European Citizen Initiative which we have brought in was Unconditional Basic Income. Certainly very short. There is also, to your information, a formula where you can give only some characters in and so on and so on. Everything is with a formula. Subject matter. Gain support for the introduction of a universal, individual, unconditional basic income to ensure a life in dignity and participation in society within all member states of the European Union. That is the subject matter. And we had heard uh, in the morning, I think, a very good explanation what is universal, what is individual, what is unconditional, and so on, from uh, Philip van Paris. I think that was impressive for me uh, to deal with these terms, yes? And exactly these terms we are asking for. Now, the objectives, that is uh, what we have to give in 500 characters, so it must be very short. I want to read out this, what we have asked for. The European Commission is requested by the signatories to use all its existing means and possibilities <coughs> to speed up the introduction of an unconditional basic income. It needs a Legal Rights Act in order to achieve the aims of the European Union to combat social exclusion and discrimination and to promote social justice and social protection, offering each person unconditionally secured material existence together with full participation in society. That is exactly what we want to have. Now we have the problem uh, with this little red paragraph which I have mentioned before. We were careful and have said they should only use all existing means and possibilities. So we have not asked for a, a legal rights act in, in the form of a directive. That is certainly a very strong uh, uh, point, uh, then the uh, member states has to in, uh, introduce uh, the unconditional basic income if a directive would be given by the Commission. That is not what we ask for. We only ask for uh, what is in their uh, possibilities. So, the Legal Rights Act, there are binding ones and not binding ones. So, they would have given uh, so they would have the competence to give a recommendation, not a directive, but a recommendation, if they want that we consider this point, would be possible. And the rejection of our uh, proposal is, in our opinion, not justified. We will come to that later, what we are doing now. So. There is also the possibility to give an attachment uh, to explain to the European Commission members more in detail uh, what is behind what we are asking for. And that is important and therefore uh, I give so, uh, some slides for that. The persons presenting the proposal for our European Citizen Initiative are citizens out of 14 
EU member states and the brackets have given Austria, Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, United Kingdom. Different in their culture, languages, social interests and political and religious philosophical background but sharing the common view presented here. That is, what, ha what is the meaning of we? That as citizens, that must not be any organization, that is citizens, yes? The unconditional basic income does not replace the welfare state, but does complete and transform the same from a compensatory into an emancipatory welfare state. And that is, uh, uh, it declared here, the emancipatory unconditional basic income is defined by the following four criteria, and again, you find these criteria, which was already mentioned, universal, individual, unconditional, high enough to ensure an existence and dignity and participation in society. And now, uh, we had uh, not the possibility, as Philip van Paris in the morning, uh, to have a speech, <coughs> half an hour, about the criteria. We have to make it short as possible, and it was not so easy between 14 countries to come to a short version which everybody agrees. And that was be done in English. At first we want to pay everything agreeing in English and then we make the translation each language. Universal, we have said in very short, in principle, every person, irrespective of age, descent, place of residence, profession and so on, will be entitled to receive this allocation. Thus, we claim a European-wide guaranteed unconditional basic income. In the second criteria, individual is very short. Every woman, every man, every child has a right to a basic income on an individual basis and definitely not on a couple or household basis. That was extra included by UK delegates because they've said that must be quite clear that it is really not based on household basis. The unconditional basic income will be independent of their circumstances of marital status, cohabitation or household configuration or of the income or property, property of other households or uh, family members. This is the only way to ensure privacy and to prevent control over uh, other individuals. It enables individuals to make their own decisions. That is, in short, this unconditional, we regard basic income as a human right, which shall not depend on any preconditions, whether on obligations to take paid employment, to be involved in community service, or to behave according to traditional gender rules, nor will it be subject to income, <coughs> savings, or property limits. Again, completely unconditional. And the last one, the amount uh, could provide uh, for a decent standard of living uh, which meets society's social and cultural standards in the country concerned. It should prevent material poverty and provide the opportunity to participate in society. This means that the net income should, at the minimum, be at the pov uh, poverty risk level according to the European Union standards, which corresponds to, uh, corresponds to 60% of the so-called national median net equivalent income. That is certainly in each country a different value. Especially in countries where the majority have low incomes and therefore median income is low, an alternative benchmark, e.g. a basket of goods, should be used to determine the amount of the basic income to guarantee a life in dignity, material security, and full participation in society. That is important but because if you have a very poor country, then uh, this median and 60% of the median is not high enough uh, for uh, living in, in dignity. So now, uh, in this uh, annex, we can uh, add some sentences more which are important and uh, that is here mentioned. 
as a result of current employment patterns and inadequate income maintenance systems. That means conditional, not unconditional, means tested, not high enough. All these things which we have heard also in the speech of precariat, yes? We regard the introduction of the unconditional basic income essential in order to guarantee fundamental rights, especially a life in dignity as set forth in the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union, if the Charter shall have relevance. That is, in our opinion, a strong argument. Above all, the unconditional basic income will help to prevent poverty and grant more freedom to each individual to de determine his or her life, own life, and strengthen uh, the participation of all in society. The unconditional basic income will help to avoid social divisions, debates, uh, debates based on envy and abuse and their consequences, as well as superfluous, costly, representative, uh, repressive and exclusive controlling and inspection bureaucracy. That is also a very important point. If you think about unconditional basic income, if you burst, it starts, if you died, it stops. So it's a completely bureaucracy behind it, nothing else. If you compare with is, uh, our compensatory social uh, policy today, it is completely different and completely uh, uh, simplified. As a transfer payment, free discrimination uh, of, and stigmatization, the English basic income prevents hidden poverty. Uh, we have made the uh, experience that many, many people don't ask for because they don't want uh, to be in this, uh, uh, in this bureaucracy involved to take each job it, and so on and so on. And so on. Uh, live without, although they should get something. That is completely out of, uh, out of topic because everybody can get it. Simple. The unconditional basic income brings about social freedom. I stop here. We have ho also heard today <coughs> this inequality between rich and poor, which is growing much more and more, is really a problem for the society. And uh, for all these people, uh, even the rich one. So I think this unconditional basic income brings about social freedom helps citizens to identify with the European Union. That is clear. If everybody would be supported by this idea from the European Union that he get an unconditional basic income, uh, then he feel as a European. Why not? It is a European Union. Today is, I, I black and white, it is a union for the banks, yes? It's, it's a little uh, uh, simplified. But I, I think the human being should be in the center, not the banks, yes? Okay. Uh, it supports the realization of fundamental rights. And now again, a sentence in bold. The dignity of the human person is not only a fundamental right in itself, but constitutes the real basis of fundamental rights. The, uh, that is the official explanation in Article 1 of the Charter of the Fundamental Rights of the European Union. There's such a strong uh, uh, statement. And now you come to one point, the introduction of the unconditional basic income and possibilities uh, of inter, uh, inter, introductory steps are within the respective areas of responsibility of the member states of the European Union. That is here the compromise. We know that the European uh, Union has, at the moment, not the competence for social matters completely. It lies in the member states. And therefore, <laughs> we have stopped here. At the end, they have said, it's clear, if you give guidelines, we should do it in this direction. But the introduction should be done by the member states. And they can enhance their social systems in this direction of unconditional basic uh, uh, income. And the last sentence, and that is also important, and we will come back uh, to that perhaps uh, with the discussion of uh, Philip van Baris tomorrow. 
As there are different ways of financing this unconditional basic income, we do not uh, suggest any specific one in this European citizen initiative, except that the coordination could be shared between the European Union and the member states. That was very important because uh, there are really very different uh, possibilities how to finance such an unconditional basic income. We have heard just before the break how you propose it. I have here a proposal from Austria, which is quite different, yes? And in each country you have another one, yes? Uh, but uh, this sentence, uh, coordination between EU and member states, that is exactly what Philip van Paris want to have in, that at least, perhaps, and he will explain it tomorrow, that a, a certain amount of money should be given to each European immediately, not as a whole uh, uh, European uh, unconditional basic income. But for the poorest, it is easy then the less uh, the, uh, to, uh, to high enough, and, and for the other also. That means at least a, a, a certain amount is given already. Makes it easier to finance everything. He will come to that later. So now we are asked for in this, uh, if we uh, ask for a European citizen initiative, that we have to give relevant provisions of the treaties where we can say, therefore, we are of the, of the opinion that the European Commission should agree to that, uh, that we can start a European uh, citizen initiative. And there are three documents the Treaty of the European Union, certainly the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union, and the third one, Charter of the Fundamental Rights of the European Union. I don't want to go to all these articles. I give for each of them only one example, yes, that you see what is behind a little. Uh, and and uh, I want to say, if somebody wants to have a copy from the full text, is, is it available uh, if you want to have it later. Uh, before I go to that, uh, these members of the citizen committee, I have already mentioned, only seven can be put in. And in our discussion, we have said Austria, Germany, France, uh, Spain, Italy, UK, and Slovenia has get one member in this official. But the working European citizen committee consists of 44 members from 14 uh, countries. Again, one point which is important, source of support and funding we have to fill in, yes? A free online collection system will be provided by the European Commission. That is certainly very nice, but not enough. And by the way, it doesn't function at the moment, yes? Uh, I will perhaps have tomorrow a little uh, opportunity. Uh, we had the 5th of October in Vienna a European uh, meeting. Uh, European citizen initiative in practice, what happens in the first half year. And I can give some highlights from there. And there it was mentioned, before the 1st of November, it will not functioning, yes? So we have a problem, uh, and so on, and so on. I will come back to that. All activities related to supporting the ECI are based on volunteering. That is certainly bad, because uh, if somebody has a problem to come to a meeting because it's costly and so on and so on, we, we will get no support from the European Commission. They have rejected any support for European citizen uh, initiative in financial point of view. But we don't want to stop. We will see how it's work. Yeah, now I give these three examples. The first one is uh, this uh, treaty on the European Union. That gives an article two. The Union is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities. These values are common to the member states in a society in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity, and equality between women and men prevail. That is, in our opinion, a good paragraph, yes, which, if you read it, think we have a social union, yes? Okay, we have said reasons for unconditional basic income. The unconditional basic income is defined by its four criteria, realizes all of the values listed above. 
It provides material security and full participation in society without conditions, combined with equality of all individuals. So we think it fit exactly. Yes? Okay. Another example from the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union, Article 5. The Union may take initiatives to ensure coordination of member states' social policies. Oh, why not? We have given here the reason. The social policies of the member states can be coordinated in order to combat social dumping. The common measures for all would be the introduction of the unconditional basic income according to the four defined criteria. The responsibility for adapting the existing national society systems to the unconditional basic income lies with the member states. So, in our opinion, we are completely in agreement with what is written already now. And the last one from the Charter of Fundamental Rights, human dignity. Human dignity is in via labor. It must be respected and protected. And there we say certainly, the dignity of the individual must include the opportunity of living freely and responsibly within society. That is a, a very important point. Free and responsible. That means if somebody has an unconditioned basic income, he has certainly, in our opinion, without saying he must do something, a responsibility for the society. Yes? Not uh, by a uh, uh, duty, but by common sense, that is certainly free, uh, free and responsible. I have to fit together. The unconditional basic income grants freedom to each individual and a life in responsibility by removing existential and <coughs> constraints as well as exclusion uh, from social life. So that was at the moment as the examples. Now, 6 September, we was very disappointed, rejection by the European Union. Uh, the reason they are not competent. They cannot do anything. Yes? In short, it was a letter of one page, but in principle uh, that is what they are saying. Now we was of the opinion what we are doing. Uh, we immediately asked for a meeting of the Working European Citizen Committee on 16th of September 2012, 10 days later. That was by random very nice because the Basic Income Earth Network Congress in Munich takes, uh, takes place and all of these people or most of the people were in any case in Munich. So we have had at the last half day to a, uh, to a committee uh, asking what we are doing now. And we see for us four possibilities. We redefine our requests for the European Citizen Initiative on unconditional basic income. Result, yes, we will try it. And we get some support from you, parliamentarians, which have said, if you take it in this way or in this way, then it is impossible for them, uh, from legal point of view, to reject it again. We will see. That was one. The second point was given in the letter from the EU Commission. We can, if we are not in, uh, uh, not, not, if we don't believe that uh, their decision is wrong, we can go to the European Court. That is certainly not easy because uh, it is costly, it takes at least two years, and the result is unknown. Yes? Or, they have said, we can also go to the European Ombudsman. He is uh, ombudsman between the Commission and the European Citizens Committee. Also in this case, we were not sure uh, that we should go this way. And the third one, that was an interesting point. We have said, we don't look to what the EU Commission is saying. We make a real European citizen initiative. That means we assume that the instrument of the European Citizen Initiative is already enhanced and this little paragraph from the beginning is deleted so that we have the possibility to change the treaty with our request and go on as, uh, as we have planned. That was postponed. We have said uh, we had 
again, here is the advice from, for example, uh, Gerald Hefner from the European Commission. He said, uh, the people uh, enhancing the instrument of the European Citizen Initiative are working on that. And it is not only for the unconditioned basic income a problem, but for many others too. So we should leave this topic to them to make a better instrument and try it as what is possible today. That means redefine uh, the ECI and try it again. And that is what we have decided. And it was a very successful meeting uh, where we take the advice and I'm not completely happy, but we will see. And we have in one meeting made a new objective text. And this is the objective text. The European Commission is requested by the signatories to use all existing means and possibilities. That is exactly the same text as before, yes? According, and now we say, to the uh, functioning of the treaty of the European Union, Article 156, that is a special one, yes? To speed up the introduction of an unconditioned basic income. In order to achieve social security, and then we have to change we, uh, it should be deleted and say, a uni, uh, an unconditioned basic income uh, will offer each person unconditionally secured material existence together with full participation in society. Therefore, we request making studies, delivering opinions, and arranging consultations on the possibilities for the introduction of the unconditioned basic interface. That is in this Article 156 that that the Commission has the right and the competence in any area to make such a thing with studies, delivering opinions, arranging concerts, and so on. Yes. So they have in that <coughs> point then no possibility from a legal point of view to say we cannot do it. So in this case, we would have at least a second chance to get it. And what we are then doing in the period of 12 months with introducing the concept of unconditioned basic interface. We will do it as Philip van Paris had done it today. In my opinion, very nice. Explaining why it is not a stupid idea and so on and so on. To many, many people, because we need one million uh, signatures. And then this idea will be uh, very uh, broad uh, given. And we think the European Commission then, if we get this one million, uh, uh, will uh, invite uh, us to the EU Parliament with a discussion with EU Parliament and EU Commission about our topic. And that then could be, because I will make one slide later before the end, and then uh, going on, uh, go ahead with my sentence, we meet again on 12th of November. That again is, uh, is uh, chosen because from 8th to the 11th of November in Florence there will be the European Social Forum 10 plus 10. That means they are dealing with what they have achieved in the first 10 years and what they are planning in the next 10 years. And in the first 10 years the European Social Forum has discussed many things. In the next 10 years, they want to act, not to discuss anymore. And our action for social European uh, unified uh, 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 basic interface is fitting to this concept of the conference. And we will make in the conference a workshop. And then everybody is invited on 12th of November if the conference is is ending on Monday to come to us if they are interested to support us. And then we make a, uh, this certain attempt uh, to the European Commission. And uh, if this is uh, possible, then the Commission has to react in one to two months' time to our second attempt. That means in the earliest days, 12th of December or 12th of January. So we expect more or less 12th of January to get an answer, yes or no, we will see. And so uh, we have then uh, to start the campaign for <coughs> these, uh, uh, for these uh, signatures in 12 months uh, to get this idea uh, 
to everybody. In the meantime, we will collect email addresses from persons for the start of the European citizen campaign already now, because we have not to wait. Uh, we can uh, ask for email addresses uh, who want to support this. If it is really official possible, then in uh, January, for example, we can ask the same people which give us the email addresses again please now fill in the form, the official form, then your signature is one of the one million signatures. Yes? And we will uh, succeed. And I am completely uh, optimistic that it is possible. Thank you.